In Creo Parametric, you can use geometry motors in a mechanism when you can't drive the necessary motion from your joint axes. And before I show you what I mean by that, let me orient you to this particular model. This is an assembly. I'm going to open up one of the sub-assemblies in here to show you how this is capable of moving. So we've got this component, which is the ground, and then we've got another knuckle mechanism with a variety of pin connections. So if I use the drag button and grab on a component, you can see that we're capable of all sorts of different angles of rotation and motion. Let's close out of here and go back to the previous assembly. When you have the combination of these three side mechanism assemblies plus their knuckle component, you can get some pretty interesting motion in here. So for example, you can see I'm twisting around and moving it in all sorts of different ways and positions and locations. The net result of this combination of different connections is that it's really hard to figure out which one of the joint axes that I want to drive in here. So let's take a look at using the alternative method of driving geometry. And I just activated a different snapshot so that the components are a little closer together to begin with. To go into mechanisms mode, I will go to the application menu and then choose mechanism. Let me go to my mechanism display. Right now I've got the display of everything turned off just because some of the icons were cluttering up the screen. So a lot of times when you are defining your different motors, you will apply them to a joint axis. So for example, I can select this joint axis and then click on the servo motor command and that will open up the dialog box you can see that the joint axis is the driven entity but instead i'm going to have geometry driven in the model so for the first motor i want this to translate in a linear direction essentially i want the wrist mechanism to extend so let's click on the servo motors command and i will go to the references tab and for the driven entity, I'm going to choose this flat surface in the model. And now I have to specify a reference entity for basically the ground of the motion. And I'm going to pick this flat surface over here. And I'm going to use this for translation. You can see the purple vector is showing the direction of motion. And for this one, I want it to extend and then come back. So let's go to the Profile Details tab. For this particular one, it's easiest for me to define the position of that surface relative to the reference surface. And for the motion, I'm going to use a cosine motion. That gives me a nice curve. I'm going to display the graph so I can see how it's going to move. And I want it to start out at a separation of one inch which is what is pretty close to right now and go out to a full extension where the length would be two inches and then come back in. And I want that to happen over a time of about four seconds. So first off, I am going to apply a shift to the cosine profile so that it starts at essentially the zero location. So if I hover my mouse over the name of the function type, it gives you the equation of motion. This particular one has four different coefficients. A for the amplitude, it's got T for the period, it's got B for the phase shift, and then C for the amplitude shift. So you can play around with the math here. And one thing I like is that by leaving the chart tool open, as you make changes to the coefficients, it will update in the graphics area. So let's see, the first thing that I am going to do, let's do the phase shift. I'll do 270 degrees. And so that way, here we have it starting at essentially the zero location and then going up. And I'm really gonna have it go out to a maximum position and come back. And so I'm actually only going to use half of this cosine curve. And so I want this motion going out and back 
to be four seconds. So the entire time, the entire period is going to be eight seconds. And so again, it adjusts it out over here. And the initial position is going to be one inch. And so that would correspond to the C coefficient. So let's plug in one over here. And so here you can see now the initial separation is one. It'll go to a maximum of two and then come back down. And let's see, that looks like everything that I need to configure for my motor. I've got the motion that I want to have over the initial period. So let's click on the check mark in order to complete that motor. And now it would be very convenient for me to start defining the analysis. I'm actually going to create two other different motors so I can get some rotation in here as well. Let's go to analyses and I will click on the new icon from the mini toolbar. Here we have the name of the analysis. I'm going to leave that the same. Here the type is position. If you are using geometry motors, it has to be a position analysis. You can't use geometry motors with the newer algorithm for the kinematic analysis. All right, let's see the start time zero. That's good. Let's start out with just four seconds of runtime. And I'm going to crank up the frame rate for the initial configuration. I'm going to use one of my snapshots, the one that's called one. And we have our motors. And this motor is going to run from start to end. That's fine. Let's hit the run button. And so it extends and then comes back. And that's good for the first part of the motion that I want. So again, we used that geometry motion in order to, to get the translational extension and then retraction. So let's click OK out of here. And so now I'm going to define another motor so that we can get this to rotate upwards. So let's create a, another servo motor. Let's go to the references tab. And for the driven entity, I'm going to drive this surface. For the reference entity, I will use the same surface that I did as before. Right now it's set to translational motion. I'm going to change it to a rotational motion this time. And for the motion direction, I'm going to click in the collector in order to activate it. I'm going to turn on my axis display. Let's grab this particular axis right there. That's good for my motion reference. And I can see here there's a little pink arrow over here. And you can use the right hand rule to figure out how that direction is going to be. And by putting my right hand, curling it around that pink arrow, I can tell that if I have a positive value, then this surface is going to move in. I want it to move out. So I'm going to have to use a negative value for the profile to get the motion that I want. Alternatively, you could use the flip button to change the direction. But let me show you how to use a negative value. And rather than defining the angular position, since I don't know the angle between those two surfaces, let's just do an angular velocity. And I'm going to use whatever the current position is as the initial. Let's just do a constant velocity. And I'll do negative 5 degrees per second. Everything else here looks good. Let's hit the check mark. So now we've got our second motor created. I can expand the motors junction box in the mechanism tree in order to show that to you. So now let's update the analysis. I will click on it and then choose edit definition. And let's increase the runtime to eight seconds. Now I will go to the motors tab. And I want motor one only running for the first four seconds. This is going to cause an error, but I'll show you how to deal with it. And now let's use this icon to add in another row. And then we can click on motor one in the list and use the drop down to change this to motor two. And I'm going to have motor two run from 
four seconds until the end. So now we can test this out by clicking on the run button. Yes, let's overwrite the previous results. And it comes back here and says, okay, the assembly could not be assembled since some mechanism constraints have not been satisfied. And you can either ignore and proceed or stop the run as it is. I'm just going to stop the run. And I figure the problem I'm getting is because when it collapses in, when it retracts, it's getting a mechanism violation with some of the joint axis settings. So let me decrease that time a little bit. Let me click the run button. Yes, I will overwrite the previous results. And then it comes back in and now it is rotating upwards. So that's good. Now I want a, another motor that's going to have this rotate out to the side. So let's click the OK button out of the analysis definition dialog box. And I will create a new servo motor for the driven entity. I will pick, oh, come here, surface. There we go. This surface for the reference entity, I will use the same surface. And once again, I want to define a rotation. And for the motion direction, I will click, oh, come here, axis. This axis right there. And there we can see the pink arrow over here. So again, you can't see it, but right now I am using the right hand rule to figure out, okay, yeah, with the right hand rule curling my fingers around that pink arrow, if I use a positive value for the angle, then this is going to move outwards. And that's what I want. Once again, let's go to the Profile Details tab, and I'm going to define the angular velocity because I don't know what the position is, and I will use the current position as initial. Let's do a constant velocity, and this time I'll do a little bit more. Let's do 10 degrees per second, and everything is good for this. Let's hit the check mark, and I can use my drag component if I want to jump right to the snapshot that I'm using as the initial condition. Let's unclutter the screen. Let's turn off the axes and let's turn off the display of the servo motors and also the joints. Click the OK button. There we go. Nice and easy to see. Now let's go back to the analysis definition. Edit definition. We're going to change the end time to 12 seconds. Let's go to the motors. Motor 2, I want this stopping at 8 seconds. Let's use the icon to add a new row. And then click in the cell to change which motor that we're using. And I want motor 3 to kick in at 8 seconds and run until the end. So this looks good. Now let's hit the run button. Yes, I'm going to overwrite the results. So we get extension, retraction, rotation, and then rotation again. So again, that's a nice way of driving the motion by using geometry when it's not convenient to figure out which joint axes that you need to move in order to get the mechanism to run correctly. And as always, once you have a mechanism running, you can go to your playbacks and hit the play button. And after it's finished calculating, we can crank up the speed and hit the play button in order to watch this over and over again as it's moving. And when you hit the capture button, this allows you to save it as an MPEG movie, which you can render if you so desire. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.